What's up guys, Mike Thomas, aka The Young Trishula here, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite decks of all time, and surprisingly, it's not Dragon Link. That's right, I actually know how to play other decks, it's very surprising, I know, but the deck that I'm referring to is Luna Light Danger. Now, for a bit of history, this deck briefly dominated the meta back in 2019 due to the existence of Outer Entity the Azathot, and is very likely the reason for this card's eventual ban. Now, at the time of this deck's dominance, it often included a Orcist engine and was somewhat focused around that. However, I, alongside my good friend Siobhan Roy, piloted a very unique version of the deck for its time. Rather than playing that Orcus package that was very common, we decided to play the deck pure, focusing around a, at the time, new Xyz monster, Dugaris the Timeless. Using a combination of Dugaris and Curious the Lightsworn Dominion, we would lock our opponents out of the game using cards like Archlord Christia and Spell Canceler. Now, if you've been following recent trends in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, this should sound very familiar to you. As recently, a popular version of Danger Tarolament has been including a Lunalite engine for this very reason. So given my history with and love for the deck, I thought it'd be nice to put out a bit of an introduction to the deck for those who might be interested in it. As always, be sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this kind of content, it really does help me out a lot, and it lets me know to keep making more of it. Also, if you're looking to get better at the game and want to support me, I do offer coaching sessions through Metafy. I love helping people get better at the game, and I know from personal experience that sometimes the best way to do it is through a one-on-one -on -one approach. I recently found out that I'm within the top 17% of coaches on their platform, so definitely check me out on there if that is something you think you might be interested in. Anyway, without wasting any more of your time, let's hop right into it. Okay, so for this first combo, I kind of just want to show what the deck can do with the least amount of RNG possible, uh, just with like a standard two card combination of like Kaleido and Lunalite Perfume. Obviously, the caveat here is that this is excluding RNG in a very RNG dependent deck. So this is not going to be a crazy end board by any means, but it is just showing what this simple two card combination can provide for the deck with the understanding that three of the cards in your hand are going to be live and the sequencing might change completely depending on what those other three cards are. So I'm going to start with this no RNG combo and then afterwards I'm going to play out a full hand with full RNG and show you how things can change. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go normal summon our Lunalite Kaleido Chick and use Kaleido Chick's effect by sending Yellow Martin from our deck for cost. This is a cost so this cannot be stopped by imperm or valor or gamma so you are just going to get to send your yellow martin for free and they cannot ash this either because the effect is not actually to send the yellow martin but rather to change the name of kaleido chick so very important for you to know if you've never played with the lunalite cards before because this is why kaleido chick is such a powerful normal summon so then you're going to use your lunalite perfume to summon back your yellow martin you can then overlook into Raid Raptor Force Tricks, use Force Tricks effect to search Blackwing Zephros the Elite, banish the Lunalite Perfume from your graveyard, pitching your Zephros the Elite and adding the Lunalite Tiger from your deck to your hand. You can then play Tiger to summon back your Yellow Martin and then summon back your Zephros by returning your Lunalite Tiger to your hand. You can then link off for any Link 2 monster. I'm going to be using Dark Charmer here and then you can play your Lunalite Tiger again. Re Reborn back your yellow Martin, and now you control three monsters of the same attribute but different type. So we're going to link these off into Curious the Lightsworn Dominion. Curious can then send either Spell Canceler or Fairy Tail Snow from your deck to the graveyard. If you're going game one blind, you have no idea what you your opponent is playing. A Fairy Tail Snow might be the better option since it's a little bit more generic and it would allow you to set up another interaction with like a rank four monster afterwards. So it wouldn't just be the snow. It'd be snow plus a rank four but i'm going to just show how we will do it with spell canceler since that's a little bit more involved so we'll send the spell canceler and just for the sake of the video i'm going to mill three three useless cards just so that rng doesn't affect this so i'm going to send a three super poly here we can then return the luna light tiger from our field to our hand again using yellow martin in the graveyard to summon herself back 
play the tiger again and special summon back our Kaleido chick. You can then overlay for Dugaris the Timeless, use Dugaris's effect by detaching two to reborn the spell canceler. And then we can link these two off into Apollo, Bow of the Goddess, to just set up a little bit extra interaction on this board. And with absolutely zero RNG, this is a pretty decent setup. So this is either this is either like Curious plus a Snow and a rank four, or Apollo plus a Spell Canceler face up on the field off of just two cards. And obviously, this is probably not how you're going to do your combo because you're gonna have so many other options with all the RNG variables going on in this deck. But just to show off that this is a two card interaction that you have that will get you at least this far during your turn. But since I'm talking about all this RNG, let's let's play out a full hand and see what exactly a full turn might look like given all that RNG, because the difference is like night and day. Okay, so just loading into this replay here, you can see I'm just drawing a random hand, not altering anything, and this hand I think is pretty strong, right? So once again, we're gonna have our Kaleido plus Perfume. This is the standard, you know, like two card combo for Lunalite. And we're gonna go Chick, Dump, Martin, and then Perfume to Reborn Martin. We will overlay these two into the Force Tricks. Use Force Tricks here to search Zephyros the Elite. And then I will banish my Perfume. And here I'm actually gonna discard the Danger Nessie because this is actually just a little bit better value because we're gonna recover the discard immediately with Nessie. So we're going to add the Tiger and then add Jackalope. I'm gonna play the tiger here and then i'm going to reveal the suchinoko obviously i don't want to hit the lunalite tiger since we just went to the effort to search it and i'm going to roll a dice and we are going to land on zephyros the elite and summon the suchinoko then we're going to draw a card we're going to draw tarolament Merly, which is very powerful and now I'm going to use my Lunalite Tiger to summon back our Yellow Marden. And as you can see here, since we had a, since we just had a danger, we don't have to go through the effort of making a Link 2. We already have three monsters of the same attribute and different type. So we can already link off for our Curious, use Curious's effect to send the Spell Canceler, since again, that is a little bit more involved and I want to show off what this deck can do at its highest ceiling. So we're going to send the Spell Canceler and we're going to mill three cards. We get lucky here and we hit a Tarolament off of our curious which is really good so because we discarded that nessie earlier we now have an aqua in the graveyard and we're going to use sharon plus the nessie to shuffle those two back and summon the kit close which requires a tarolment plus an aqua monster kit close is going to use her effect and search suliak from our deck which can be either a search or a interruption depending on how rng goes we will once again go danger jackalope use jackalope roll the dice and we are going to hit Suliak, and we'll draw a card. Now, because Suliak was sent to the graveyard by a card effect, it's going to search Tarolment Sharon. Sharon is a good search here because it is an extender, so we don't know what hand traps our opponent has, so we're going to want to get an extender. And now I'm going to use the Jackalope plus the Curious to go for the Apollo early, and I want to do this just in case they're holding on to a Nibiru or something. Maybe they have, you know, a Veiler that they've been holding on to. Not sure why they wouldn't Veiler the Curious, but you never know. And then we are going to use Kit Close to send itself and special the Merly from our hand. We're doing this instead of using the Sharon here because I wouldn't want to trigger the Merly to fusion. And we are now going to mill eight cards. So as you can see, we milled both a Merly and a Sharon. We've already used Sharon, but we have not yet used Merly. So we are gonna be able to trigger this Merly. We can go Merly effect, shuffle herself back and shuffle back the Sharon just to keep as many names in our deck as possible. And I'm gonna summon Garura. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to link off for the Sprite Elf and trigger Garura to draw a card. We draw a Danger Nessie. I like going for the Sprite Elf here because this will allow us to play on our opponent's turn. Even though the Sprite Elf isn't pointing to anything, it can't provide protection from targeting, it still can reborn us the Merly on our opponent's turn, which does allow us to play a little bit more. We're gonna use the Martin in our graveyard to bounce back the tiger. We're gonna now use the tiger on the field to summon back Kaleido Chick. And I'm going to overlay into Abyss Dweller. But just to open up here, you can see that I have not milled any extra Lunalite cards. So I'm going to use the effect of my Abyss Dweller here to put a Lunalite back into the graveyard. And then I'm going to pay 400 to return my Lunalite Tiger to hand, summon out the Zephyros the Elite, play Lunalite Tiger again, and summon out the Kaleido Chick. We can 
can now overlay two for Dugaris. And we're being sure to put all these in attack mode because when we use the effect of Dugaris, it is going to skip our next main phase. So we're not gonna have a main phase next turn. So we're gonna start our next turn immediately in the battle phase. So we're gonna want to have everything in attack mode to push as much damage as possible. As you can see here, this is 1600, 1400, 1200, and 1700. This totals up to 5900 on board, which is not lethal. Now we could, if we were to play something like IP Mascarina, we could summon the Sharon here or reveal the Nessie, make IP and try and go into like a zero Boros on our opponent's turn. But instead, I'm just gonna assume that we're not playing the IP Mascarina, set the Forbidden Droplet, because even though it's negated, if they out the spell canceler, we can still use it. And now I'm going to just check our graveyard, use any effects that are remaining. So I'll use the Perfume, pitching the Distrudo and get Kaleido Chick, just shuffle up our deck a little bit, put any of those Tyralments we put to bottom back into like the middle or the top of our deck, and we're just gonna pass. And so now with this, we're turning off all their spells. We have two monster negates and we can lock them out of their graveyard. But we also have the Sprite Elf to Reborn Merly, and I'll just check to see what our mills are. And we do actually mill a Tyralament here. We mill another Merly. So we can use that Merly now to fusion, and we have a Rhino Heart in our graveyard, so we can make the Kaleido Heart here. We could use Kaleido Heart to pop a card on their field, and that also gives us the extra damage we're missing to make this lethal at the start of our opponent's next turn. Now, is that necessarily important? Probably not, because our opponent's probably conceding to our board anyway, but now we don't have to worry about that because we just have the 8900 on board. And keep in mind that we still have cards in our hand as well. Now, what I could have done on my turn is I could have also fit in a Time Thief Redoer at one point using like the Sharon and tagged out the Redoer. I didn't want to do that though, because it would clog our board with the sprite elf obviously we could use the redoer to tag out again if we were to attach a monster from the top of our opponent's deck but again you know it would just stay banished and not come back if we wanted to use Merly, unless they cleared another monster on our field. So we could have fit in even more, like we could have tried to put a redoer onto the field and set that up into rotation. And that would have also set us up for lethal if we didn't want to try and trigger Merly. But I think having the Merly is good because that gives you extra potential layers of interaction, whereas redoer is just setting you up for lethal. But really, ultimately, that is kind of a decision that you as a player can make. And personally, I chose not to to go for it. Anyway, guys, that's about all I have for you today. This was really kind of just a brief introduction into the deck to get people kind of thinking about how to play the deck and kind of just familiarizing you guys with some of the combos, just showing off what this deck can accomplish. Let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you'd like to see more Luna Light Danger Tyralment content, I would love to keep making videos on the deck because I think it's really fun. I think there is a lot more to the deck that hasn't really been discussed in this video. If you guys would want to see a deck profile for this deck, I can go ahead and share my deck list with you guys as well. Just do drop a comment. Let me know. Remember to like and subscribe too if you haven't already. It really does help me out a lot. But yeah, that's, that's about all I have for you guys today. So I really do hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in the next one.